Hi, in this video I'm going to give an overview of metrics. So first of all, if you have to start up by thinking about why you're going to measure. If you don't actually measure something, then you're not going to be able to express to someone a, a really good idea of where you've actually reached with something um, or uh, give someone a good understanding of where you are in the project. Um, so uh, just three diff quick definitions before we get on to anything. Measurement is the process by which numbers or symbols are designed to attributes of entities in the real world such, uh, in such a way as to describe them according to a clearly defined unambiguous rule. Um, so the key takeaway from that definition is that it's either a number or a symbol. It doesn't have to be a number uh, per se. So for example, if you're talking about like, ordering of a list, the ordering of a list could be ascending or descending. That's that's a symbol that's clear, that actually kind of uh, quantitatively describes it. Um, and it's not actually just a number itself. Um, uh, measure is a quantitative indication of a extent, amount, dimension, capacity, or size of some attribute of a product or process. Uh, for example, um, the number of errors. So that would be actual me measure. Um, metric. Uh, and this keyword that defines the set of slides is a quantitative measure of degree to which a system, component, or process possesses a given attribute. A handler guess about a given attribute. Um, so, for example, the number of errors found per person hour uh, per, found per person hours expended. Um, what we are concerned about are metrics for software engineering as a body, and this actually falls into four four main categories. The first type are product metrics. Uh, that concerns the product quality, uh, cost, the time to get to the market for that product. Uh, it gives you insights of the, of the process paradigm, the software engineering tasks, the work product, milestones that you're going to meet. And in general, metrics about product lead to long-term process improvement. The next type of metric are process mm. metrics. Uh, process metrics talk about the efficiency and effectiveness of the process itself. Uh, it assesses the state of the project, it could track potential risks, it could uncover problem areas, adjust the workflow or tasks, and it generally could uh, evaluate the team's ability to control quality. Project metrics um, talk to uh, quantifying defects, the cost, the schedule, productivity, estimation of your resources and the deliverables. Uh, <coughs> and the last type of metrics that are concerned in software engineering are the organizational metrics. So that has to do with the organizational economics, um, whether or not your employees are satisfied, how you communicate between your different teams, and how your organization grows as a whole. So all of these areas are things that we can measure and the, uh, the things that we can measure in software engineering. So. When we're going to use the metrics, the process that we're going to use is that we're going to select first the appropriate metrics for the problem. So no matter what we do in first step, is always just identify what the metrics are. And then you have to utilize the metrics on the problem, and then you have to collect the assessment and feedback. Uh, with that, you need to be able to formulate um, how, you're going to, how you're going to solve the problem, how you're going to actually collect it, how you're going to analyze um, it. You have to also figure out ways up front of how you're going to interpret it and how you're going to give feedback as a result of your process. So all of these are the key steps in actually using a metric um, in software engineering. Now you have several different kinds of metrics so don't get uh, thinking that there's only one kind. Um, direct measurement, uh, so for example you could measure the number of lines in, in your source code. Um, we'll, we'll get to that when you're talking direct product metrics. Um, you could also get indirect or derived measurements. So for example, um, defect density is equal to the number of defects in a software product over the total size of the project. So what we could do is we could measure the number of defects in a software product and we could measure directly the total size of the product and then we can indirectly uh, get this derived measurement which is called defect density. Um, <coughs> the other kinds of metric are predictive type metrics. So you could um, predict the effort required to develop the software from um, measure of the functionality. So like the number of functions that um, this product will have in it, for example. 
the next kind of uh, metric that we could talk about are nominal ones. So um, you have no ordering um, to that metric. So uh, like 3GL, 4GL, or if you're talking about cell phone or LTE, you could talk about 4G versus 3G in a cell phone or something like that. Those are just ideas of um, ordering. The next type is ordinal where there is ordering but there's no quantitative comparison so for example keep program or capability um, you could have orders of low low capability average capability high capability and we could we could measure that um, the next kind of metric are interval metrics um, so that's like between certain values so program more capability between the 55th and 75th percentile of the population ability that, that's a way we could actually measure it um, our next one is ratio uh, the proposed software is twice as big as the software that has just been completed yeah where you actually um, say the size of something in terms of the size of something else so it's a ratio the next um, the last type of metric is absolute metrics so the software is 35 350,000 lines of code long yeah so you could have direct measurements that are absolute you could have indirect measurements that are absolute you know you could um, you, you could have a little bit of mix and match in between these different types but in general it falls in, into one of these um, categories so why would we want to go and use these things well, it allows us to estimate the cost and schedule for future projects. It allows us to evaluate the productivity impacts of any no, new tools and techniques. It allows us to establish productivity trends over time. It leads to improved software quality. You could forecast things like future staffing needs, and you could anticipate and reduce future maintenance needs. And that's it in a nutshell for um, metrics. The next video will hopefully be be a bit more um, we'll get into some details of some um, direct product measurements that we can take okay that's it thanks